All right, this one is a 2000 Toyota Camry LE if it matters. Of course, the check engine light's on. And I have some codes here. A 401 EGR in insufficient flow. So unfortunately my Mitchell's down. I can't really give you a wiring diagram or a vacuum diagram, but I'll draw it I suppose. But you can see I already have the new back pressure transducer in the car, but I don't think I had a video on one of these, so I'll show you what I did here. So the first one honestly was just when the car is running with the car running I just wanted to make sure the EGR was not plugged and I could could reach my finger up in there when the car is warmed up of course it's stalled so I know the EGR port is not plugged um, the next check, a simple check is just check for vacuum or check to make sure the diaphragm's not destroyed in the uh, ETR valve. So get a vacuum pump. Just with a handheld vacuum pump. Just make sure the can pretty much almost stall the car out. So I have EGR valve that opens up with the diaphragm mechanically and with vacuum. So I'm not even going to chase that. So the next step was the control side. And on this one here, I'll draw a picture. All right, so like I said, my Mitchell is down, so unfortunately I'm just gonna have to draw you what I remember on this car. But you have a, um, a ported vacuum source on after the throttle body. There's a ported vacuum source, and this ported vacuum source goes into the back pressure transducer. And then there is an outlet on the other end of the back pressure transducer that goes down below the engine to a uh, vacuum solenoid with two wires. And then another, this vacuum comes back out and goes to the EGR valve. So this is my picture of an EGR valve. <clears throat> so, the computer controls the solenoid to allow vacuum ultimately to open up the EGR valve and then like I said this is ported vacuum but you have on the bottom of the EGR valve in the exhaust port a back pressure line that goes up into the transducer. That's a really terrible drawing. <clears throat> so what we're looking for is Ultimately, we want vacuum at this EGR valve to open it up, which I don't have. And it's a ported vacuum source, so you have to rev the engine, of course, to get the uh, vacuum to get there. But So you have a circuit you have to check on the solenoid with the power on the ground. I can't remember if it's duty cycled or if it's just an on-off, so I have some wires plugged into it so we can look at it. But um, what I first thing I did is with a couple things I did, then the next one I did is I just disconnected these two lines. Now there is a, a third one up top here that goes back to, I think on the other side of the throttle plate, so I don't know if that's a vent line, so if anyone knows, like I said, my Mitchell's down, so I'm concentrating on, let's see if I can find, I'm concentrating on P, 
and D and it does show you what they do and you can you know put a little bit of pressure into the back pressure port and then you should have flow between these two and I don't honestly remember what is that an R return maybe I don't know ported return and whatever is that a Q who knows looks like a Q from here either way I'm concentrating between here and here so what I did is I just bypassed it to see if everything works so we'll show that real quick all right well before I do that if the solenoid doesn't work I'm never going to get back into the EGR valve so I have those wires that I you know attached to the hidden Solen vacuum solenoid and then the white wire was my power wire and the black one is ground. Uh, you can see I put some jumper wires in and they put these in a really stupid spot. I can get this to light up above the axle and you can see I have it back probed. I think you can see it why they would put it there I don't know because they're a pain in the butt to get your hand up in there and you can see the electrical plug in the one vacuum line the other one is on the other side of the solenoid but just to show that working um, so I'm hooked up to my power wire the computer control side and you can see I'm seeing 1.3 volts. I'm not sure if that that could actually be, uh, you know, the, I don't know if that's the computer bias voltage or what I'm seeing there, but there's the solenoid is off right now. And when you rev it, you put it under the right load condition, you can see the computer. If I hold it too long, it shuts off. It's like there's only a certain window where they want these valves working. So, anyway, you can see the computer control of that solenoid. So, I didn't even go this far whenever I did it, you know, in the shop here. Because all I did was check for vacuum on the EGR valve. When that solenoid opens, I should see vacuum on the... Uh, at the valve, so with a uh, vacuum gauge hooked up, hopefully that'll show up here. Next light died, so we'll rev it up and we'll see. It would help if I actually had the bad one in, so you can see. Of course, everything works. So. What's up, Jim? Yeah, I just uh, get the info off the car. That's the vacuum modulator transducer? It's a back pressure transducer, yeah. Back to that. So, with the bad valve in, you can see I really don't have any vacuum being pulled onto the system. I do have it electrically. So, what I did is I, I took a vacuum splice. So with with a vacuum splice in there bypassing the 
the uh, back pressure transducer right there. If I rev it up, you see I have. So that's all I did really in the shop. I made sure that the valve opened by hand and it flowed and almost all the car. I made sure it worked with the diaphragm and a vacuum pump. And then I bypassed that thing altogether just to make sure the solenoid worked. I didn't even go to the electrical part because if I see that vacuum, it's working. So there is one more part of this that has to do. I've seen these Toyotas go bad um, on the back pressure end. I've seen the port inside the valve. I don't know if I'm going to get a good picture of it. But with... Get some good light here. There's the lower hose where my thumb is. Goes on underneath this bracket, and it goes. I can see where that goes. There's the valve. This is going to be really hard to show, I think. So where it goes on the bottom of the valve, right. Below my flashlight, I can probably pull that off. You can even hear when I unplug it that I have flow there. But I have seen, I have seen those things clog up inside the valve. You have to pull the valve out underneath the valve. That's actually in the exhaust stream below the intake part. So you should be seeing some back pressure here. So I'll plug that in and we'll measure it. So you can see even, even with it hooked up, I do have a, back, a little bit of a back pressure. And when I wrap it up, you can see I can get it to go under a moderate load to like like three pounds. So you know of course if I had a if I had a plug in the exhaust, you know this would go way up real high, but that's kind of normal under 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 uh, normal load. So there that's the control side. So the computer is only allowing it under certain RPMs and certain temperature conditions. Cold being the one that won't let it run. And then, uh, then it relies on the back pressure and that's how much, you know, how much back pressure you have is how much vacuum it's going to allow to allow that valve to open. So, and then it, I believe it checks it with this map sensor right there. And that line comes over right to here so when that EGR valve opens the, the map sensor itself is going to show a change and it's going to know that way pretty sure how this one works hopefully I'm not lying to you guys like I said I don't want to keep repeating myself but my Mitchell's down so all I know is the valve doesn't open so put the new one in I know I have vacuum I know I have a good solenoid I know I have a good valve and circuitry and back pressure so we'll put the new uh, new back pressure transducer in and we'll show it works. All right, so I got the new valve in, and I'm going to really all you got to do on these is rev them up, and if if the EGR valve lifts, if it lifts when you rev it, it's working. It is lifting, but I don't know if I can show that on a mirror or not. That's my ultimate quick and dirty is just see if we can get this to show up on a mirror. Not, 
see if I can play that back and see if it works. So that's pretty much it. That's a quick and dirty end of the day. No Mitchell kind of knew what the problem was going to be, or at least I've seen enough of these to know where they lie. So today I'm glad it wasn't that solenoid where they bolt and it was something easily available off out of the aftermarket. So car is fixed. I'm going to ship it. Thanks for watching.